What's up, everyone? Welcome to uh, another random live stream. Um, we're just here drinking, and before uh, Nick and I have to get up early in the morning and drive to Louisville, so for work. Um, so, but it's still National Bourbon Day, so I mean, why not? Cheers. Why not? Right at eleven o'clock. Right. Put something in this though. So we got. Um, David and Steve with us. They're both Patreon members. Um, I just put up the link in the Patreon chat for anyone that wants to uh, wants to join us. So, cheers to you guys, man! Staying up late. Cheers, cheers, absolutely. So, what are you guys drinking on? Uh, just poured a little McKenna Ten. There you go. How is it? Um, really good. Yeah, it not quite worth a lot of the hype that it's been getting recently, but really good. Good, good deal. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like I've, I've had some good bottles of of McKenna Ten, but never have I been like that is the best bourbon I've ever tasted. You know what I mean? Like, it's I've had some good bottles. I've had some some bad bottles, but we have a couple. Um, I've just I've never. No, I don't know. Just if so, and according to uh, oh, what's her name? The master distiller over at Heaven Hill. Um, you keep going. Okay. I got kids. He was like, uh, "Yeah, the the people in the back just grabbed a random case and sent it over to, um, over to, uh, you know, over to San Francisco competition and stuff. And it was just a random random box out of the warehouse. And I was like." I don't know how much I believe that. Yeah, I'm not it's, sure I buy that one. No, not even close. It's they they routinely score that high on something that's a single barrel release. Yeah, they make a good bourbon, but how you can two three years in a row score that high on that kind of tasting, right? Up random off the shelf product. Yeah, I don't buy it. Especially with how much like how much variation there's been lately, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like that's the thing. Like yeah, if they yeah. were always solid, then okay, maybe you know they could get lucky. But you know, I, I haven't heard of again, like been actually bad, but there have been a lot that haven't quite been up to uh, uh, up to par. Right. Um, I mean, I will say like it's from a business standpoint, they would be stupid not to send their best barrels over. You know what I mean? Like, for, as a business person, yeah, I get it. Like, you you honey picked a barrel and sent it over, you know, and slap the Henry McKenna name on it. And I mean, they can't say that's not Henry McKenna. You know what I mean? Well, no, absolutely. So it's just I mean, a, from, the right barrel, right? So from a business standpoint, like, yeah, yeah, I'd send my best stuff over, no question. So. But David, what are you sipping on over there, buddy? I've got some Knob Creek single barrel. It's a store pick, and it's 15 years old. Yeah. How you like it? Uh, it is, um, you know, for 15 years, you'd think, oh, man, this is going to be an oak bomb. But it, uh, it really is just, it's really well balanced. And with just maybe a drop or two of water, it opens right up. Nice. Yeah, I've had yeah. – um, I went to go buy a 14-year single-barrel Knob Creek, and I tasted it. Luckily, I tasted it in the store, and it just mm -hmm. had this, like, super astringent oak oakiness to it. And I was like, eh, I'm, I'm going to pass. But um, I actually just went and bought a three-pack, a 14-and-a-half-year, a 15, and a 15-year, two-month um, Knob Creek three-pack store pick. Um, and all three of those were just – phenomenal so it was pretty awesome you get access to all these nice store picks down in tennessee we get uh we get them uh, we don't get anything hardly up here in indiana um yeah we actually we're we're pretty lucky as far as store picks goes um it's one of those things like we're close enough to kentucky that i think we get a good amount of the allocations and stuff um but we're yeah. not in Kentucky, so you don't have all the people going to Kentucky to find it. I've, you know, people that live in Kentucky say that's the 
Like you can never find anything there because that's where everyone looks <laughs> for bourbon. So, um, yep. yeah. We've had some pretty good luck getting some really good bottles and interesting store picks and not really having to fight big lines yeah. for stuff. Yeah. Um, now, like, obviously when they release, you know, the Pappies and the um, the Wellers, the Stags, the BTAC collection, all that kind of stuff, like, yeah, there's there's long lines and a lot of competition. But other than that, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's not too stuff. bad. Yeah. We do got some people in the chat. Chad Holly, Bourbon Professor, Mash and Drum. Um, hey, Jason. Dustin Martin, Steve, A. Yeah. So cheers to you guys, man. You? So I want to know how many of the people in the chat just got done with uh, the Whiskey Dicks live stream, his marathon live stream. <laughs> Chad, uh, it, it can't be too late of a night, man. I have to get up first thing in the morning and drive to Louisville. So. <laughs> But anyway, um, I got some Jefferson's Ocean, uh, Voyage 11. Aaron's got some Booker's, Booker. Kathleen's Batch, and I've got some uh, Weller Special Reserve. Yep. Yeah, good choices all around. So I have zero complaints about what is realistically an inexpensive bottle of Weller with a screw top. Yeah, it's what should be inexpensive. But <laughs> What should be inexpensive? It doesn't no, drink inexpensive, but it's definitely. Is it your bottles or is it Kyle's bottle? <laughs> oh no, it's Kyle's bottle. I'm at Kyle's house. It would be rude to bring it out. Well, I don't want to taint his supply with my supply. But as the proper house guest, you should bring always bring a bottle, right, to replenish the stock. Uh, you would think that, but he's... You, you would think, but the house rules here don't allow that, actually. Believe it or not, they're written down somewhere. I just haven't found them. <laughs> really? <laughs> Those are news to me. Yeah. I got rules. Uh, I didn't know. Car he, he's carved them into the stone. Right? Somewhere, I'm well, sure. Hey, the house is rock, so I could go and carve it into the stone. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you just have to have a big enough chisel and hammer. Right. That's right. I'm sure I could find something. He's got a bunch of tools in the garage. I could Dremel. <laughs> Dremel. Yeah, just Dremel it to the side of his house. <laughs> house rules. Nick does not bring alcohol. House rules. Drink mine, not yours. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Very simple, but to the point. <laughs> Bourbon Bro Professor said free whiskey is the best whiskey. And he's. I agree. He's not yeah, wrong. My uncle, my uncle always said that the best kind of beer is OP beer. Other people's. Other people's. And I mean, he's not wrong. So, ADHD fishing in the house. What's Cheers. up, buddy? And Stellar Matrix, Moose seventy six, Ronnie Berry. Wow, all sorts of people showing up. Ronnie said, "How's the Booker's?" It's good, very good. Um, it's not as good as Backyard Barbecue, but uh, Kathleen's batch is very good. So, a bunch of people have been trying to get the uh, Kathleen's batch here lately. Um, That's not have bad. You the, have you had the new um, O2 2019 bookers yet? That's the one I just saw, and it wasn't it. And the one I just saw at Bill's. Mm -hmm. no. no, that was the 1704. Oh, um, we did get track. a uh, 1902 actually just today. So, oh, by the way, I got you new bookers today. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm still uh, recovering from our last live stream unfortunately. Um, so I am not drinking nearly as much as I did that night. <laughs> I just caught the tail end of it. Just not even 20 minutes ago and went, Oh, that was bad. So we're drinking yeah. slowly tonight. <laughs> well, she is. I know. am drinking slowly. You <laughs> guys just, should. I'm just drinking. <laughs> so what are you guys excited for this year? What do you what do you guys want want to go hunt? Well, for me, I do want to try to get my hands on something BTAC. Didn't manage to get in any of the lotteries and win one this or win one of them this last year, but uh, tried all of them. They were really good, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, finding some place that you can get a bottle. Yeah, it's like I said, even around here, um, I think we get a fairly good allocation and it's not easy 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, the MHG3 said, Enjoy your live streams. Love the backyard barbecue. Cheers to you, man. Appreciate that. (sighs) Yes. Ronnie Berry asking, uh, I've had some Angel's Envy. Uh, Yeah. I actually won some in a raffle and it was, I really enjoyed it. I haven't finished the bottle yet, luckily. Uh, Look forward to continuing the drink. Didn't we have that on the show? I'm pretty sure we did. Angel's Envy. I don't think so. Okay, then I was looking at putting it on the show. I, <laughs> or I pour it. I mean. Um, the bourbon The bourbon's not bad. I I enjoy it for the most part. Uh, I think the rye, at least the one that I have, it's the rum barrel finish, and it is super sweet. It literally tastes like marshmallows, like toasted marshmallows, really and good. it's it's too sweet for me. I can't the do it. The rye tastes more like rum than whiskey. Totally yeah, agree. it's but I like it. I like it sweet every once in a while. I like a good rum, so that doesn't really bother me too much. I used to be pretty big into rum, and um, you, you still like rum for the most part. I do. You gave me um, a, a Zaya 12 that I really enjoy. I did, I forgot about that. Yeah, he's um, a good friend to have, realistically, <laughs> not just for the alcohol, but that's a real big bonus. It's included in the list of friend perks. Right. right. It's it's not it's really not even in the top five, honestly, but like it's definitely in the top ten. Joe Dawson says he's looking on the hunt for us uh, for roses, small batch select. It's really good. Yeah. So uh, I I I suggest yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm savoring this bottle until I can get up to Kentucky this weekend and get a couple. I was gonna of, say uh, more. In, uh, twelve hours. <laughs> get some more because you know kyle, kyle i'll tell you living in indiana southern indiana really gets some good stuff yeah like, as far north as uh, seymour on exit 50 at, on 65 okay you want to go an extra 50 miles out of the way but um, you don't think he will really <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't put it past him in a heartbeat the it, you're talking about the guy who's talking about leaving it two or three o'clock in the morning to go to the bottle drinking at 11 <laughs> Do I need to call in a bomb threat in Alabama, like the Alabama border, so that way you're safe to drive north? Chad said he tried the ECBP 139.4 tonight. Dude, that is probably one of, I mean, easily in the top three bourbons I've ever had. It was insane. Um, The A119 is also fantastic. Um, I think Elijah Craig is the one that really switched me over from wine to bourbon so the high proof barrel proof yeah that's that's the way i roll um yeah so my my experience with the 139.4 uh it could be skewed a little bit i will say that um i went over to a buddy's house and he's got a lot of really good whiskey and um we're sitting there just trying stuff and he was like hey man have you tried this have you tried this have you tried this and he's giving me all this different stuff and most of what we're drinking is barrel proof and we got to um we were probably eight or nine eight or nine drinks and i mean small drinks you know tasters not not throwing them back or anything but um we get to the elijah craig 139.4 and it was just this awesome cherry flavor bomb in my mouth um and then after that i tried a i think it was a 16 william larue weller and even that was like 135 proof, I think, that year. And it didn't hold a candle to the Elijah Craig. So um, somebody was asking on Patreon about the uh, best barrel proof to start with, and they said they liked Elijah Craig. It was, you got to go for the Elijah Craig barrel proof. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, between the 12 year yeah. grade statement and the accessibility of it, I mean, yeah, between that and they said they like wild turkey 101 so it's like well rare breeds pretty solid too yeah and it's only you know what 40 bucks and it's pretty available um exactly it's yeah i saw that and i didn't have a chance i saw that you posted and said you know what do you drink normally and i was like all right well i'll hold off and see what he uh see what he says but i didn't i didn't see that post yet um but yeah i mean bookers is you know always a good standard easy to find and um you know pretty it's 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 got a good 
you know, a good flavor to it. It's not super hot. So I still don't understand. I don't find the high proofs hot. I find the lower proofs hot, which makes absolutely no sense. That's different. It is. It's bizarre. Chad says easily the best Elijah Craig he's had, but a one nineteen is awesome too. Um, just got that one the other day. It's been, it doesn't drink like such a high proof either. Um, no, it really doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of flavor in there, but um, Maker's Mark cask strength. Ugh. What do you guys think about Maker's cask strength? It's good. It's not gonna. It, it if somebody's asking for a good. If somebody's asking for a good barrel proof bourbon to start with for that kind of thing, I'm going to go with rare breed or uh, ECBP because they're just fantastic. Maker's Mark. If you don't like Maker's Mark, the yeah. cast strength is not going to work for you. If you do like Maker's Mark and Maker's 46, the Maker's cask strength is a good choice, but not everybody likes that profile with the weeded. Dave, I saw you kind of giggling over there. What do you think? I, I've had Maker's uh, cask strength. It's it's just not my. It, I, but I I'm not a huge fan of regular Maker's. I like I don't mind Maker's 46, but I like uh, I like I, I didn't like Maker's Mark cask strength the, the the one time that I tried it. It's been a it's been a year, so maybe oh, yeah, I should it, read this. It, but if you don't like if if regular right. Maker's isn't your thing, the Maker's cask strength isn't going to make it any better. It's just going to be more so. Um, so my experience with it, I don't mind the Maker's Mark, um, just the regular bottle. But the cast strength I have, it's was a 111, 114 proof, something like that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was super hot, like super hot. So that, I've got a, a Maker's Private Select store pick that's like 107, 108 from Tart. Yeah, and it's good. It's, from, it's good. It's still – it's kind of spicy, but it's not – like ethanol, hot, spicy. It's it's just typical makers from what I've come across. It's good. I like it, you know. But I like the makers profile, where some people don't. I mean, the other option with that is you could get a like a Russell store uh, store pick or just a regular single barrel. It's a hundred and ten proof, and that is fairly close to barrel proof. Um, the Knob Creek single barrel is hundred and twenty proof. That's pretty close to barrel proof. I mean. Yeah. Go. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> it's hey, it's man, awesome. and forty five bucks. Like, you can't really argue. Yeah, it's the, right. The money's there for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, especially when you can get a store pick. You know, on paper, a hundred and twenty proof, fourteen, fifteen year single barrel for forty five bucks. I I don't think you're gonna find that value. Anywhere else in whiskey right now? Yeah. Anywhere? No, no. There, isn't there a Knob Creek 25th anniversary edition? It's like fifth, it's 15 years old, but it's uh, and it's a. I want to say maybe it's 100 proof, and it's uh, it's 150 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's I think there's like 140, 150 in my store. Yeah. The 2001 edition, they still have some of them on the shelf. Um, yeah. I've got a taste. Uh, one or two of them at a friend's house. They were good, but they were no better really than a good store pick. So it's right. it's hard to justify when I can get three store picks for the same price. Yeah. At a higher proof. So. Oh, man. This Ocean's is really good. I don't drink it nearly enough. What's your thoughts on Jefferson? Oh. What, what? what was that? You both are talking the same time. I heard. What's your thoughts on Jefferson and um, Steve? Oh, I don't know if that, that was Voyage Seven. Uh, four eleven. Oh, eleven. Yep. And Chad Holly, your next drink should be Old Forester nineteen twenty. Or Bell Mead. Castrin. I know Old Forester nineteen twenty. Either are amazing choices. MSG the MSG three. I still like Weeders. It's fine. It's not a bad thing. What were you saying, David? What are your thoughts on uh, on uh, Jefferson's just in general? I I, know, I, know, I see you have the uh, the Ocean Voyage there. 
Um, do you taste what? What's the uh, difference between the Ocean Voyage and like the Jefferson's Reserve? I mean, obviously the Ocean's Voyage has been out literally on the ocean, but is there right. really a, a discernible difference between the Ocean Voyage and Jefferson's Reserve? Um, not so much in in like straight flavor or anything like that. Um, but I will say, like, I do get a Salty like a briny brine. saltiness on the back end of the uh, of the ocean. So um, that's what I enjoy about it. I will say if you can find the cask strength, it's like usually 20 bucks more. So mm -hmm. I would definitely, definitely go for that. I mean, this is only 90 proof and it's 80 bucks where the barrel or the, yeah, the cast strength is like a hundred bucks and usually around the 110 ish proof. So it's, it's hard to argue with that. You know what I mean? I really wish these were closer to like 60 bucks personally, but to each their own. Uh, 76. What are your thoughts on Ducal nine year? Single barrel, single select. barrel select. Sorry about that. What do you guys think of the Dickel? Haven't tried it. Never had it. David? No. Um, I really enjoy the Dickel single barrels. There's definitely some good ones out there. Um, when we were at the distillery, I think the uh, the single barrel was probably yeah. No, it's super good. I really enjoyed it. If if you like the Dickel Twelve, um, the single barrels are usually on another another level up from that. I've really become pretty partial to their uh, bottled and bond they released. I've got a couple of bottles of it, and I'm hesitant to finish them because I don't want them to go away. Tried that. Thirty-eight year, or yeah, 30, thirteen year for thirty-eight. 30, that's proof, be a thirty-five hell bucks. of a bottle. Yeah, yeah, thirteen and a half year. Yeah, for thirty-five bucks, it's it's real hard to beat. It's it's super good. I really really enjoy it. It's not overly complex. Mm -hmm. No, it's um, not complex at all. The nose isn't like something you can sit there and, and just fucking wave under your nose for hours or, or get you know sip on it all day. But I could, like Kyle says on the channel, couch pour. I could sit there <laughs> and just just go to town on that thing, just get obliterated, and not feel bad about it. So I didn't know this, but Chad Holly was saying that he passed up an ABC pick. I didn't even know ABC stores did like store picks. That's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they send like local bourbon groups to do it. And sometimes they just have the distillery do it. Sometimes they have people in the office that know nothing, nothing about, about bourbon. bourbon. That's really picking sad. barrels. <laughs> it's that last one. That's usually the problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, because I don't trust ABC picks I've there. Alabama is like right across the state line. Um, we go there for dinner and stuff on a regular basis. I mean, it's, it's not the closest far. real town, right? It's, um, you have to leave Tennessee to find a real town. The MHD, yeah, I said thirty-eight. I was thinking thirty-eight dollars and thirteen and a half year, so I mixed it up. Um, yeah, the the ones I've got from Alabama have not been good, and they're picked by a local bourbon group. So I don't, yeah, like I don't know. They just they just weren't. Have to weren't out great later on at all. What bourbon group that was? We don't want to bash anyone on the show. <laughs> it's not like you know who they are, and you you can say, "Oh yeah, that their flavor profile, you know, what they like is what I like." So, well, I mean, I know some of the guys, some of the guys in it that do the picks, um, but that one is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Office workers picking bourbon be like, that one is pretty. <laughs> That's funny. Which one's the fullest? <laughs> right. <laughs> we can get more bottles from it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you said someone from finance there. <laughs> yeah. I sent the girls from accounting down to the distillery. <laughs> and... That's right. That right. only, only drink wine or uh, Smirnoff. There we go. It's hot. <laughs> Just pick the first one. <laughs> What tastes like each snobs. Watch out. <laughs> there you go. Which one is going to yield the most bottles? Wait, is it peach or peppermint? Because that'll matter. <laughs> I was actually drinking peach, basically peach snobs earlier tonight. <laughs> well, you had a, yeah, you did have a peach bellini at dinner. It did. <laughs> it's pre-gaming. Oh, man. 
So. Well, Kyle, right. I am out of bourbon right now. What do you oh. think? Joseph Magnus or Russell's Reserve Single Barrel? Just, Joseph Magnus. Joseph Magnus. <laughs> Always. Always Joseph Magnus. All right. Magnus. Yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but like I said on that episode, I would take that bottle home and introduce yeah. it to my parents. <laughs> I, I introduced it to my dad. They were up from Florida. He said, oh, yeah, this is this is good. Right. <laughs> I've tried to get my dad to drink whiskey. He he won't do it. Will not. He's got a good selection of beer at his house, though. Yeah. Yeah. And tequila. And tequila. He likes his tequila. That is very floral. I, I've tried giving him, like, the most mildest 80-proof bourbon that I can find. And still, he goes, oh, that's hot. Oh. oh. And then he tastes it and does the same kind of reaction. And then so. I take the glass and I finish it. <laughs> Whiskey, whiskey is not his thing. No, nope. you not encourage thing. him to pour more of that so you can finish it off. <laughs> I keep saying, like, look, you got to get past the first two or three sips. Once, once you get past the first two or three sips, then everything's yeah, golden. Yeah, you, you need to get him like three or four drinks of tequila in, and then, then do introduce it. him. <laughs> to the, that way, his mouth's tempered, and he's already half drunk, so it doesn't matter. He'll be like, oh, that's good. That's how I started with red wine. Start mixing half tequila, half bourbon. Do that. Bad Holly, it's right here. It is literally, this is Teresa's batch, or the bottle's right there. Of course, it's right here. You know she's got her bookers. Come on now. Except now I have to drink it a little slower. Uh, apparently, I am still not recovered two weeks later from our epic Get Aaron Sloshed episode. I actually <laughs> just saw the last, like, I don't know, a couple clips of it. I'm like, turn it off. This is too it horrible. Was, it was real entertaining. That was me. really a rough, rough an night. And I really am going to have to pay Mike back for that one. Do not drink with people oh, you know from Mike. junior high. Oh, my God. Thank God. No offense, Mike. I love you to death. But I was obliterated. I mean, that wasn't just destroyed. That was just, oh, man. Moose 76, why is there jello in your whiskey? That's a good question. There shouldn't be. No. Jello shots with whiskey. Now that would be an interesting See, conversation. Maybe fireball, but that's that's about as close as to bourbon as I would get with jello. I'm no. not a fan of fireball. I like cinnamon. Blech. Like I, I'll put I'll put a whole box of tamales away like a champion. <laughs> Don't put that in my whiskey. Don't put fireball in your whiskey. Bourbon here. professor said you were hilarious. Oh, I'm glad it was entertaining because I saw <laughs> that and I went. All I did was see the look on my face, and I was about to start talking. Like, just turn it off. I don't need to know what I said. I don't least, know. At least Chad's acknowledging that you're taking that you took one for the team that night. Oh. She took more than one. She took lots <laughs> of drinks for the team that I night. I was. I had a three day hangover on a one hour live stream. We did the live stream for three and a half hours, and I woke up making breakfast in the morning. So uh, I saw her the next day, and I was like, "Wow, hi, Aaron." <laughs> She was like, I haven't eaten anything. I don't want to. <laughs> I was dead. <laughs> In fact, we did a live stream that Tuesday um, with the round table. Mm -hmm. And I literally took a sip of bourbon and had to like choke it down and not take any more because it was that bad. Will it wet dogs? <laughs> it does. It tastes like a wet dog. <laughs> No, but it's so good. Oh, but it's so bad. That's right. That was the night you drank most of that bottle because they were. Oh, that was a bad night. The Willet? Yeah. Noah's milk. Like a wet dog rolled in a trash, a trash can. can. <laughs> People ask me what pot still tastes like. And I said, well, if you ever want to lick a dog that's been rolling in a trash can, you know what Willet tastes like. Yeah, you, know, you know, the first time I ever had Noah's milk was uh, from a, a friend of mine. You know, when I was just getting into bourbon, and I, I really enjoyed it. And then I tried it again, and I said, why did I enjoy this? <laughs> I did the same kind of thing with the pot still. Like, you know, first getting into bourbon, I was like, this is an awesome bottle and stuff. And It was pretty. I'll give it that. The yeah. bottle's beautiful. And then it looks great on a shelf. Yep. Oh, yeah. Aesthetically, Although, that bottle is. But it takes up it so much room, though. Like on a shelf? I want to make yeah. it a lamp, but then I would have to like acknowledge that pot still has been drunk in this house. <laughs> I don't know if anyone could look at me straight, you know, that drinks you can, bourbon. You can pour it out. Yeah, but then you have to explain people that you bought a bottle to pour it out just to make a lamp out of it. Or just have somebody you send you the bottle. I'm sorry? Just have somebody send you the bottle. 
Yeah. yeah. You can buy one on eBay. I'm sure people buy it and fill it with not as worse whiskey. Or anything. <laughs> I mean, can't get much worse. Pro probably 10 and high. Right. Yeah. And Chad, Chad, uh, Chad Holly and Bourbon Professor are commenting that I did not eat dinner that night and I was not drinking light beer. No, we don't drink light beer in this house. That's what you drink when you're drunk. No, we're pretty much doing shots of like Booker's and Stag Jr. and... <laughs> Light beers for when you're on a diet. Your dog's dying. He's Can anyone else hear that? <laughs> Frank's uh, Frank the dog is coughing quite a lot. Um, I actually the some of the will it rise? Um, I've come around to, but the will it bourbon? I just I've tried some of the other ones out of the distillery too. Um, what is it, like the pure Kentucky? I think and mm -hmm. Rowan's Creek. Other ones. What's that? Rowan's Creek. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had uh, Rowan's other... Creek. Didn't we have that Lincoln County Bourbon Society? That one wasn't too bad. Mm, I don't think so. There's the other one, though. It's a high proof. There's Rowan's Creek, and the other one is supposed to be, like, the premium ones. And they all just have this, like, weird – it's almost like scotch to me. Like, it has that weird medicinal doctor's office taste Pete. to it. It's that... Pete. It's not Pete. Okay, it's Pete. Well, in scotch, but not in – it's not smoky. But it's got that like doctor's office rubber glove taste to it that powdered latex <laughs> gloves in a bottle. <laughs> Yum! Will it winning it again? Light light beer with no water is a, light beer is really just like water with vitamins in it. Think about it that way. It's really good yeah, to drink after way. you're drunk. It's it's like you get your water, but you also get your grains from the food pyramid <laughs> <laughs> all in one. <laughs> Usually in a can that has very minimal labeling, like Coors Light. Right. Malty? No, not really malty. Just bad, like horse piss in a <laughs> bottle. Like I don't. Campfire and rubber tires. Yeah, you're not wrong, Chad. Chad. Chad Holly says Pete is like is campfire and rubber tires, um, and he loves it's it. It's like a tire fire. Do I need to go and like pour some Ardbeg for myself? Um, I mean, it is National Bourbon Day, but I, I, I that's all I've been drinking so far today. Um, um, no, I mean, I I don't know. The first time I got introduced to Pete really was a Lafroig 10. Um, apparently that was the oh. wrong place to start on the Pete scale. <laughs> that's about as peaty medicinal as you can get, even more so than Ardbeg. Um, uh, luckily, I was I was in a we went out to dinner and um, it was before our dinner. And I told the bartender, I was like, look, dude, I just want to try it to know if I, if I need to order a bottle of this or not. And um, he let me try it. And it was, I mean, maybe that much or so. In the glass, and I took a sip of it and ruined my fucking steak. Like literally <laughs> my entire dinner. That is all I tasted was that smoke peat. Like, Tastes like engine oil. <laughs> oh my god! Just said I, I had the exact same experience, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. But the same guy who came over and let me try like five bourbons. Uh, we finished off with a Lafroig ten year, and he goes, "You have to try this." And I go, "All right." He goes, "It's been sitting on my shelf for ten years. I can't get rid of it." <laughs> I go, "Well, this is going to be great." That's not a good sign. Wow. <laughs> I, this tastes I like shit. <laughs> I don't think that's why they call it ten year. I, I tasted it the rest of the damn day. It was it was <laughs> terrible. No. Chad like, said oh, the uh, Octomore is sticky cheese and beef jerky. I don't think that's a great combination. I'm, uh, I'm that's not, on you. I'm not signed up for that. He said nope. it'll definitely ruin a palate plan accordingly. I mean, my thing with Pete is like the same thing with cigars. I've said it before. Like, I love the taste of a cigar and the flavor of it. I don't like tasting it four hours after I'm done with it. That's why you secondhand yeah, smoke like, it. Like That's what I, cigars are for. I love the taste of cigars, but I don't like tasting it the next morning. Or There's something very just, nice about having people smoke a cigar while, around you while you drink a glass of bourbon. I don't want to smoke a cigar. Some. I just want to sit yeah. with you. No. 
the question is, would you prefer they smoke the cigar around you or smoke a good pipe? Ooh, see, Ooh, pipes are pipe. <sighs> for sure. It's two different memory. Like oh, very, I'm a very nostalgic person and uh, there were a lot of people around me um, in my childhood that smoked pipes. So mm -hmm. it's a totally different, I don't like to drink around secondhand pipe smoke. I mean, that just sounds weird, but I'm used to drinking yeah. around cigar smoke and uh, pipe smoke just has a whole lot of nostalgia yep. to me. I'll drink around anything. <laughs> when you could actually still smoke in bars. I lost track of the number of times at the one bar that I was a regular at where I would light up a pipe and somebody random person that was in the bar would walk up to me and say, Oh my God, that smells just like what my uncle, father, grandfather, neighbor, whatever used to smoke. I love it. <laughs> right. I like to trip out the hostess sometimes and ask for the smoking section because like, <laughs> <laughs> well anymore. They always been they're always like, wait a minute, we don't <laughs> just give it a couple. We, do we have one of those? Waiting for a couple more years and they're gonna look at you like you're nuts. Like, what do you mean a smoking section? Oh, I'm still gonna do it. <laughs> just ask for the vaping section. Go to Vegas. Right. <laughs> yeah, where's your vape cloud section, bro? <laughs> My Subaru is parked outside. <laughs> My vapor has Wi-Fi. Prius. <laughs> to Prius. I got, I got Prius. my box mod. It smells like <laughs> cotton candy and lies. You vape cotton candy. Not anymore. <laughs> it wasn't cotton candy. It was a uh, cherry. Blueberry, I had, I cherry. watermelon bubblegum. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Sitting here talking trash. I totally that was like a month that. ago. It was like three months ago. Oh, that was so ago. yesterday. It wasn't yesterday. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> it's a dodge dart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, so where are we at? Never have I been skunked while fishing. When I have smoked a pipe before, uh, I don't fish, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> keep keep going, man. Chad wants to know what software you're using to get the background, Steve. The backgrounds. He's, uh, he's got the barrel. Barrel. I'm barrel. using uh, UBS, and I've got a green screen. UBS. That's oh, awesome. Do, you mean you're not sitting in the distillery? No, he's not. OBS, OBS Studio, and I've got a green screen because I've done some uh, video game streaming in the past. And uh, I decided rather than showing you the, uh, the the shit show that is the office that my, that I live in uh, with all the crap back there, I uh, put up the green screen and have Pearl House. Nice. That's really awesome because I was a little confused on where exactly you were. <laughs> It doesn't Probably take much to confuse it. the blonde, but you know. I can tell awesome. you weren't in a barrel house, but I was no. like, that looks cool. I want to really awesome. it. <laughs> no, it was uh uh did a hang did a couple of hangouts with uh, a couple other whiskey tuber types, um bourbon sane and uh whiskey dick a uh, couple of month 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 and a half, something like that ago. Yeah. And I was like Hmm, what do I do here? And track down this uh, screenshot. And I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> I like it. It works. Um, how hard is it to get that that green screen stuff set up to where it's um, you know works works good? Oh, really easy. Um, yeah. it, the, you have to be using like Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio or something like that. It depends on. Uh, what you're doing for your streaming OBS studio has a plugin that will allow the video camera to go into OBS studio, then have an output as a virtual camera that Google Hangouts recognizes to do things like this. Nice. I may, uh, I may pick your brain about that later. If you Feel don't mind. To, hit me up on Patreon and uh, ask me. I'm, 
glitter and shine. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how. <laughs> They're not going to shut up. Sorry, we're using my laptop tonight and uh, my Facebook's exploding. <laughs> unfortunately. So we're going to try and mute that and hopefully not lose everyone. No, there's... I, you have it set up to... What's it called? And mute. Don't, uh, don't mute Google because we're in Google. No, yeah. I'm muting um, bad. Facebook. So that's how my phone... Never mind. Yeah. Thanks. Done. Done sauce. Boom. Great. Sorry, guys. I'm so popular. No, not popular. I just happen to be a member of a group with like 6,000 members in it, unfortunately, for other things. So. <laughs> Channel background. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought about it before. Um, I mean, I like the cabinet. That's cool. But. Steve, what is your channel for the gaming and stuff? What did what? Uh, someone was asking what your what your what's your channel? Oh yeah, um, it's pretty much defunct. I haven't done anything for months. And it was, and it was really only on uh, Twitch. Really only on what? Twitch. Okay, gotcha. So. My dog's actively dying in the kitchen right now. <laughs> He's got allergies and hacking up a lung. So, poor guy. Give him some bookers. It'll be fine. <laughs> Chad, the, the new lights in his cabinet do look awesome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, my cabinet that no longer is mine. It's nice. ours. You drink Kyle, bourbon Kyle out of there, too. two of the three shelves in it, plus the very top. Right. We have we have equal amounts of interior space in the cabinet. I'm gonna stay out of that one. <laughs> Stop <laughs> telling me Aaron's calling bullshit on this. <laughs> I was about to comment about my laundry room, but we're not gonna go into that subject either. Um, I was gonna go for the four roses. No, well, we're gonna do uh, four roses oh. small batch. Uh, I'm still waiting for that to show up in Minnesota. It's good. I've Hopefully been, soon. That's been this glass. And as you see, it's not lasted very long. It's yeah. It's very it's OPB. Other people's bourbon. Found it, right? That it's amazing. That's the best bourbon is OPB. And he drinks a lot of it. <laughs> I've offered a lot of it. it not, as much as not as much as not as much as Jason. I will give you that. Not as much as Jason. I it would be rude of me to turn it down. I was raised better than that. My mom would tell you that. To drink other people's shit. No, my mom doesn't really drink. Oh. Dave, have you got the uh, small batch select yet? I haven't. They uh, our, our local place here sold out of it before I could get to get my hands oh. on. So I uh, I went down and bought some. Uh, Y'all are probably going to hate me, but I went down and bought some Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. At a, yeah. At one hundred and thirty two point one proof, it is awesome. It's Dude, bananas. The, the Jack Barrel Proof, I actually really like. It That's was very bad. good. We did that at a... Wasn't that the one we did at... Was that the Jack that we did at... Lincoln County? Uh -huh. That was a single barrel. Oh, that was a really good one, too. But it totally tastes bananas. Have you done yes, the Heritage does. Barrel yet? Do what? The Heritage Barrel. No. My local store got a few of them, and they were all gone by the we time I got there. It. So I did not... I did not get one. I wanted one. The bourbon professor knows what I'm talking about. Don't turn down free whiskey. What were you saying, Thank Dave? You. Nothing. Okay. Right. Chad, definitely appreciate that. Um, he's got another sample pack headed our way. That'd be awesome. Speaking of sample packs, uh, David behind. sent us one. Um, oh. So we need to uh, set that up, man, to where we can... Have sure. you on and, and try that if you're up for it. That is absolutely. Let's uh, let's do it. I I, I hope y'all don't. Uh, I think you'll like two of the three, but I'll be curious on the third. That's the way it goes with uh, doing it blind. It's always fun when there's someone going. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to get people to put sh bottles they don't like on the show just so I can watch their face. <laughs> it made my day. Like I I love. <laughs> 
love hearing them try and come up with nice things to say about something and hope and you can see the gears in their head working going oh please god don't let this be something that i'm supposed to like please god don't let this be something that i spent like a ton of money on uh i think chicken cock is one of my favorite episodes oh i've got something it was terrible. I need to remind me I, i've got something for you well, you to, do i you... said it was terrible <laughs> during the review bourbon professor no i don't i don't like Jack Daniels. I just like the barrel proof and it's not what you said. A couple of the single barrels. You said you liked it. I liked the Jack Daniels barrel proof that he was talking about. That's what you mean. You like Jack Daniels. You like that Jack Daniels. One of them, yes. He did feel a shift in the force. Just I mean, I like Will It Rye, but I don't like Will It Burn. Pot still. So, I mean. Chad Holly, what bottle was your 500? dollar bottle was that was uh that was the uh russell's reserve 2002 that was not good at least in my book sorry i still haven't revisited that i need to i need to go back and grab that sample and revisit it but I it's got a shit ton of oak in there mm -hmm. it really did but and i'm sorry i really hope you didn't pay 500 i mean he said he didn't pay that oh good good <laughs> i was like oh my god I will gladly bash your five hundred dollar bottle, and then I'll tell you I'm sorry you spent it. But I'm sorry, but I just don't feel like any bottle of bourbon or whiskey is actually worth five hundred dollars. Not in the price range of money that I have currently. Oh, not with even my bank if, account. Even if not. I had like what Kyle and I like to call "fuck you" money, that like I bought a Lamborghini because it's Tuesday. <laughs> like, no, at that stage, there are some exceptions. But there are exceptions, not what you expect. Right. I mean, there's if I if I had to pay five hundred bucks to get a Russell's two thousand two, and I was super rich, sure, why not? Am I giving you two hundred dollars for Weller twelve? Absolutely. No. Not. no, not even close. Well, that'd be stupid. There's, you know I mean? there's a part of having money and being able to be like, hey, this is a five hundred dollar bottle, and I'm going to go ahead and pay the five hundred dollar bottle. And yep. then there's the whole like. I just gonna blow money to blow money because I'm an idiot. So I mean, like if I was stupid rich, when I buy George T. Stag for three four hundred dollars, yeah, probably. Would you go I ahead mean, and buy five thousand dollars? I honestly don't know that I would. What's that? I honestly don't know that I would buy George T. Stag for that price, even if money was no object to me. It's an incredibly good bourbon, but I honestly can't see myself paying more than. Okay, so with money being an object, 150 or so, right? With money being no object, even past 200, I'm like, you know, that's a really good bourbon. I mean, it's a really good bourbon, mm -hmm. but how many bottles of something very nearly as good can I get for that same $200? What would you classify yeah. as? nearly as good and readily available or with a little bit of search a number of elijah craig barrel proofs mm -hmm. a lot of the stag juniors um a number of independent bottling type stuff of scotches i'm a scotch drinker not just bourbon okay. um and that's, that's, a whole, that's a whole different that's a whole different discussion some um, of the mgp stuff out there is yeah oh, really yes. good there there are so many Incredible MGP bourbons out there. Some of the single barrel Blonde Brothers or um, uh, Bell Mead single barrels. Bell Mead or, makes some really good stuff. I mean, this one is like, impossible to get anymore from uh, Crowded Barrel uh, Whiskey Tribe. Yeah. Whiskey yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I managed to get one, of, I managed to get a couple of bottles of the first run of four that they did. How old is it? Um, did it was only about three year, three three and a half years. Okay, but it was three years in the MGP warehouses, then another six months or whatever in Texas, which is, you know, six months in Texas is damn like super years anywhere else. <laughs> right. I lived in Texas for three years. I don't recommend it. He it, used to work eighteen. He's I only did. he's only twenty now. I was like <laughs> a year ago, like not even a year ago. I was eighteen, and now I'm thirty five. Sucks. Is that how long it took you to grow the mustache? It is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Six months. Okay. It, just, 
as soon as I got to Texas, it just immediately started coming through, and I couldn't Cut shave the it off. Bars. I broke three <laughs> razors trying to get rid of it, and it just won't go anywhere. <laughs> it must be all vaping. <laughs> no, it, it didn't show up until Dallas. It was the weirdest thing. As soon as I, I crossed the Dallas border, I saw the sign on the side of the interstate. It was like, boom, right there. I don't know. I want to see what a bottle of bourbon would do in Arizona. Probably close to what it does in Texas. Burst into flames. Del Bach. <laughs> Blow up. <laughs> no, Del Bach. Whiskey Del Bach. They're in Arizona, that- aren't they? I huh. that in Mexico. I have to find that one. There is a couple distilleries that popped up mm-hmm. in Arizona. That would make my day to just see what it tastes like. Age six months, effectively seven It need years. to be north. I'm talking north Arizona. We're going to have to go to Arizona and find out. Yep. It sounds like a road trip. We'll be fly. It's only it's been something like 20 hours. 20, 24 hours. We do it all the time. I do it with two kids. I'd rather fly. I'd rather get on like a three hour flight and be done. I don't know. I'd rather get on the side of the road and throw Caden on the side of the road when she needs to get sick. There's nothing like having to deal with here's the sick bag. Yeah, no. It doesn't work. To the sewer, this is she's walking by. (laughs) Um. Oh, Zeppelin um, said, uh, "What is the best way to get allocated bourbon?" Wait in well, long lines. Well, either you can pay out the ass for it. <laughs> That's option A. Oh yeah, I I I could have picked up like four bottles of George T. Stag and a William Larue Weller, and I think a Sazerac back a couple of months ago it just would have cost me 500 bucks a bottle right yeah it's one of those things like just no way just no you go into a store and you see it on the shelf and for like a half a second you get excited and then you're like ah what's the catch because i because the i've gotten to the point that i don't even get excited it's the okay what are they going to charge here for this right so i went um a place they had uh some old rip and some lot B sitting on the shelf. And I was like, all right, what's what's the deal? There's no price on it. And it was in like a glass case. And I was like, what just what's the deal? I yeah, that that's the way I ask it to I saw a uh, Weller at one of my local stores a few weeks ago. And I'm like, okay, I've gotta ask how much you're asking for the William Weller 450. Like, nope, thanks. Yep, pass. So I asked him, and he was like, "Well, uh, we're selling it for uh, eighty-nine bucks." Okay, you have my attention. What's what's the catch? He was like, "Well, you have to buy uh, two cases of seventeen ninety-two small batch." Um, <laughs> I was like, "No, it was at cost. It was seventeen ninety-two at cost. It was like twenty-two bucks a bottle or something." But I was still like. No, I don't need two cases of seventeen ninety two. I don't know that I'd want two cases worth. <laughs> right. I was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking, I was like, how many people could I give this away to as like Christmas presents, <laughs> birthday <laughs> gifts? <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I can think of uses for that much seventeen ninety two small batch because seventeen ninety two small batch is a solid bourbon. It's not it is. Nice. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's not chicken cock. If you're getting it at cost. I'd have to think about that one. I, I did. I did think pretty hard. I mean, it is like twelve to a case. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, five hundred dollars worth of seventeen ninety two small batch, which gives you good solid couch bourbon for the next decade. So DJ uh, David Rarebird one hundred one said he walked into a store one day and asked if they had any William Larue Weller. The lady went to the back and a man walked me to a shelf with a curtain in front of it. He pulled the curtain back to reveal Weller Special Reserve. <laughs> and, and, and how much were they asking for that, Railroad 101? Yeah, DJ, how much? And I, I would have just laughed like that's not William LaRue. Like I know it says Oh my god, that's just wrong. <laughs> GTS for eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Reserve. Hell no. 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 Not even. 
I don't even think. Yeah, I picked uh, last time we were in Texas. I picked some up, um, and it was eighteen bucks for a bottle. That that's fine. I'm I'm totally if, good with that. If they're asking thirty thirty five, sure, why not a hundred? Hell no. Yeah, no, hundred absolutely You'd be stupid. not. Like, Just no. I'm totally comfortable with special reserve in the thirty to forty dollar range. Yep. Yep. No problem with it whatsoever. I might pay forty for a for a special reserve. Yeah, I I genuinely enjoy it. I think it's a really it, for my personal taste, it's a good bourbon. I have no problems with it whatsoever. Um, but a hundred dollars, that's what a I hard thought. pass. Wow. I can get a pick up Booker's for seventy five. Like Booker's is way more complex, has a ton more flavor for less than that. Like. No, the proof's too low for me. Yeah, it's a 90 <laughs> proof, so Aaron's like, it's hot. Okay, what about the uh, antique 107, Aaron? You like I don't it? know if I here's my problem. I know what I do like, and I can tell you which ones it's not. I don't drink enough. Well, I shouldn't say I don't drink enough bourbon, I don't pay attention to enough bottles where I search it out. Um, I have the ones that I absolutely uh. We'll search out, but everything else is just bourbon. So uh, it, Kyle said I liked it. So <laughs> it, it didn't stand out in the crowd for me. Let me put it that way. Um, the ones that stand out for me are Booker's, obviously Elijah Craig. Um, New Riff is absolutely amazing. Uh, and Resurgence out of ASW and those, uh, and then anything Four Roses. Um, there's one recipe I don't like, and I'm not a fan of the yellow label. But uh those are kind of my uh, go-tos. So Zeppelin said, uh, Rare Bird 101 would be on Suicide Watch if Wild Turkey 101 was allocated. <laughs> I think he would just pop up a tent outside the distillery and he just wouldn't leave. Yeah, okay, Dave. We've, we've got that. Yep. Good old standby right there. I don't have any 101, but I've got the uh, turkey bottle of uh, Kentucky Spirit. There you go. That's like a single barrel 101. I've yeah, got the, Russell's uh, single barrel rock. Yep. Yeah, single I barrel mean, pick. Wild Turkey is putting out some awesome stuff oh, for. Yeah. I mean, ooh, there you go for Buffalo stuff regular on the shelf. Very nice. It just dawned on me. I kind of stay away from Buffalo Trace. I like Buffalo Trace. Yeah, I'm trying to Buffalo think of a Trace bottle I night. actually. Love. I mean, just in general, the whole distillery. Like, I'm trying to think. Elijah Craig's out of Help Me Out. Heaven Hill. Oh, well, you like George T. Stag. Uh, yeah, but I can live without that one. I mean, George T. Stag's good. I like Buffalo Trace. It's the Disneyland of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> it's my happiest place on earth. Why are you <laughs> like, I don't see what your problem is. <laughs> you can pay Disneyland prices for it. <laughs> oh, I don't, and I won't. But you could. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. You could go to Disneyland too. I don't want to pay Disneyland prices for Disneyland. <laughs> I will say for for regular stuff on the shelf, I don't know if there's much that beats Wild Turkey 101. For I think it's like 25 bucks yeah, around it's, here. It's Wild Turkey is one of those yeah. ones you can drink it straight. And if your friends are stupid and pour it in Coke, you don't want to cry or kill someone. So regular playing Knob Creek is right in that same ballpark. Yeah. Uh, I think Knob Creek around here is like 40 bucks. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 if Knob Creek's over 30 around me, I'm like, what the hell do you think you're doing? Which I don't get because the regular small batch is um, 40 bucks, and then the single barrel is $45. So. 45 like, for the single barrel, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm okay with that. Just. The regular small batch, it's hard to pull that pull that trigger at forty bucks. Wow, nothing. It's not good, but oh, I saw an article today. Um, the regular Knob Creek small batch is gaining its age statement back at the mm -hmm. beginning of next. Yay! What's the age statement? Nine, Nine years. years. Nine years. Yep, yep. They're getting it back. So, which I'm happy for. Rarebird says that uh, he's a fan as long as it's straight whiskey and not a fan, of, and he's not a fan of the liqueurs. I would Same. totally yeah, agree. Um, the only one I do like is the one that's cream, which isn't a liqueur, but it's oh, the definitely bourbon, uh, the uh, Buffalo Trace bourbon cream. Yeah, it's really good over ice cream. 
it's really good over ice cream and it's really good as uh creamer in a coffee. I was about to say that it's really good in your coffee in the morning. Hell yeah. <laughs> I will remember that because for me it's either that or I or I make a real Irish coffee, but you know one of the two. So Chad's starting to trying to start a fight in the uh, comments. He said Old Forester one hundred beats one hundred one any day. Ooh, that's, 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 that's fighting words, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. One. Like I I do love the Old Forester one hundred proof. I really do. They they're just very they're very they're different, different for sure. I think the Old Forester is very fruity, where the 101 has more of that spicy, earthy flavors. So, okay. I want to like Old Forester. I really do. I mean, I picked up a store pick Old Forester earlier today. It was I super just, good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Rare Bird said, if you like stale bananas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would agree with him. I, I hate to say it like that. Uh, I um, want to like Old Forester. I really do. But Zeppelin was asking about Evan Williams single barrel. Um, it's good. It it it's good. It's complex. It's easy drinking. It I think like 30, 32 bucks around here. I'm um, trying to put a flavor yeah, profile was, on it. I, I think can't it was even. One at Bill's earlier, that was like. 30 ish bucks. Yeah, they're like 30, 32 bucks. There's usually nothing wrong with them. They're they're really good. Um, I just think the 101 and even the old Forester 100 for that matter have uh more complex flavors. So uh we may have a fight in the chat. Yeah, old Forester DJ like said eating bananas, bananas of a cardboard, cardboard box. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> oh, Chad got hit in the head one too many times as a kid. The the 1920 is an amazing bourbon. Yes, yeah, it is. Yes. Absolutely. I just don't feel it. The I MHG3, I feel like you're not the only one that has uh, dark memories from your past with Turkey mm. 101, to be fair. I don't, but I'm sure there are a lot, a lot of, people of people out there that do. Yeah. That's Chad cool. says um, he likes a hu he's a huge cherry fan, and he gets a lot of that in the Old Forester line. Yeah, I mean, I, I do too. That's one of the reasons why I love the 1920 is because of that big cherry – Cherry bomb flavor. I just get bananas. But and I really don't like bananas. DJ's not, as not as a fan of the 1910. The one that's double barreled. I'm trying to remember which one I was we we did this at uh the New Orleans Bourbon Festival and I drank I think I tasted all of them and I was trying to remember there was one that wasn't as bad as the rest of them but I just couldn't do it and I don't get cherries on any of it and I really want to like old forester i love the fact that the master distiller is a lady um i i like their label looks awesome but i i just can't drink it mm. t10 is vanilla and oak i mean i'm i'm good with that i like the 1910 i, I got nothing nothing against it i haven't had one i have i have but, no opinions on either of them there's a lot of other bourbons i'd rather drink anyway guys i'm over here yawning um you guys got anything you want to talk about? Mm, not really. <laughs> okay. It's, it's late on a Friday, you know. Well, I got to get up in probably three or four hours and drive up to Louisville. So they're trying to chase a bottle. Maybe. Or two. We'll see. I got it, kids. It, 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 is uh, Elmer T. Lee worth it? At retail, mind. sure. Yeah. Any more than that? No. Well, okay. maybe a little more than retail, but not what you see it for. I, I, as a drinker, I probably wouldn't pay more than fifty bucks. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you if you haven't had it and you really just want it on your shelf, you know, sixty, sixty-five bucks maybe, but that's Cer certainly no more than sixty to sixty-five. 50 yeah. or so, um, but, I mean, retail's, what, 35 on that thing? A um, actual, actual, if you ask the distillery, what's the price supposed to be? Hmm. Now, it, right. by that measure, William LaRue Weller and George T. Stagg are $99. Right. Um, and I think in Tennessee, they're, like, 120 Yeah. Uh, Elmer T. Lee here, retail is, like, 45-ish. Okay, yeah. I'd buy that. Uh, actually, DJ came out and said a good point. He said, I get John J. Bowman. 
similar profile and twice as good. I mean, I I can't say he's wrong. I love the John Jay Bowman, and um, it's it's the same mash bill, if I'm not mistaken, and it's just aged in Virginia instead of Kentucky. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's only a couple hundred mm. miles. It's over. <laughs> I'm going to have to get going, guys. Yep. Appreciate you guys coming on and hanging out. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. National Bourbon Day. Ten more minutes, nine more minutes left. Nine more minutes now. <laughs> so, anyway, cheers to you guys. Cheers to all you guys in the chat hanging out. Appreciate all of you. So, and we will see y'all later. <laughs>